on the military intelligence picture or its interpretation. That is to say, in June 1967, Israel agreed with the United States. Nasser was not going to attack, and if he did, and even if he did with neighboring Arab states, the Israelis would whip the hell out of them. Well, then why did Israel launch its first strike in June 1967? The reason is fairly straightforward. Nasser was this radical nationalist, and he was defying Israel. And he made all of these defiant gestures in June or in May 1967. So he had to be cut down to size. He had to be reminded who is in charge in the Middle East. At that time, Ariel Sharon was a divisional commander, and he said, we have to attack. Why? Because Nasser is getting out of hand. We are losing our deterrence capacity, our main weapon, the fear of us. The Arabs were not afraid of us. And so we have to cut them down to size. One of the leading Israeli historians in the topic, a fellow named Ze'ev Ma'oz, he said the reason Israel attacked in June 1967 was to restore the credibility of Israeli deterrence, to restore the deterrence capacity, to restore the Arab world's fear of Israel to remind the Arab world who is in charge, Israel is in charge. That was 1967 when the problem begins with the occupied territories. And now if we move up to the year 2000, Israel faces another threat to its deterrence capacity. Those Arabs are getting out of hand again. They're getting too uppity. So in May 2000, after an 18-year-long guerrilla war, the Hezbollah expels Israel's occupying army from South Lebanon. Israel suffers a humiliating defeat, and it's a defeat which is celebrated throughout the Arab world. Immediately after Sela suffering its defeat in May 2000, Israel begins preparing for another war against the Hezbollah. They have to restore their deterrence capacity. They have to restore the Arab world's fear of Israel. In summer 2006, Israel finds its pretext and it unleashes the fury of its air force and prepares a ground invasion against the Hezbollah. But alas, it suffers yet another ignominious defeat. In fact, it was a defeat of colossal dimensions. A respected uh, American military analyst, partial to Israel, but nonetheless he concludes, and now I'm quoting him, the Israeli Air Force, the arm of the Israeli military that had once destroyed whole air forces in a few days, referring to the June 67 war, not only proved unable to stop Hezbollah rocket strikes, but even to do enough damage to prevent Hezbollah's rapid recovery. Once Israel's ground troops crossed into Lebanon, they failed to overtake Hezbollah's strongholds, even those close to the border. If you look at some basic figures, you get a sense of how big the defeat was that Israel suffered. 
Israel deployed 30,000 troops in Lebanon on the eve of the war. The total number of Hezbollah fighters and irregular Hezbollah forces totaled 6,000. Israel delivered and fired 162,000 weapons against Lebanon. Hezbollah fired 5,000 weapons. The number of weapons Hezbollah fired for the whole duration of the war, Israel fired each day of the war for 34 days. And in fact, Israel never even fought the main Hezbollah army, the crack Hezbollah troops were stationed along the Latani River waiting for the Israeli invasion that never happened. Israelis were very upset by the defeat they suffered in 2006. And they were itching for another war against the Hezbollah. From their point of view, they were not down, they were down, but they were not yet out. They wanted another crack at the Hezbollah. But they didn't yet have a military option. In mid-2008, they desperately sought to conscript the United States for an attack on Iran. They hoped by knocking out Iran, they would also decapitate Hezbollah, and then defeat their main challengers in the region. Israel threatened that it was going to use non-conventional weapons, nuclear weapons, if the United States didn't join in the attack on Iran. Well, to Israel's chagrin and humiliation, the United States opted out, Iran went its merry way, and Israel's deterrence capacity, its capacity to terrorize the Arab world into submission, it slipped another notch. It was high time to find a defenseless target to annihilate. Enter Gaza, Israel's favorite shooting gallery. Even there, the feebly armed Islamic movement, Hamas, had defiantly resisted Israeli dictate in June, 19, in June 2008, even compelling Israel to agree to a ceasefire. Well, what was the strategy? What, they, what, what were they going to do in Gaza? It was pretty straightforward. During the 2006 Lebanon war, Israel flattened this area of South Beirut known as the Dahia. It was a Hezbollah stronghold, a large amount of popular support among the poor in Beirut. I had a chance to visit that area a few months ago. They turned it into a moonscape where once there were five and six story uh, apartment dwellings, there was just nothing. And Israel then began to talk about the Dahia strategy. What was the Dahia strategy? They said, we shall pulverize the 160,000 Shiite villages in Lebanon that have turned into Shiite army bases. We shall not show mercy when it comes to hitting the national infrastructure of a state that in practice is controlled by Hezbollah. That was the head of the Israeli Army Northern Command. A reserve colonel said, should there be hostilities, we have to act immediately, decisively, and with force that is disproportionate. Such a response aims at inflicting damage and meeting out punishment to an extent that will demand a long and expensive reconstruction. 
the interior